Okay, this is a documentary about the um, clock classes that have been running uh, for the past 15, 57 years through Oppenzer Central School District's continuing education program. So first of all, I'd like to thank them for all their support over the years. And also like to thank uh, Jeff Bass of Marist College for their support. Uh, and um, you're going to be hearing from me and several other people, they'll be introducing themselves. But first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, myself and Raphael. I'm the, uh, I run the uh, Orological Restoration Program, and uh, this is also called the Advanced Program, or Advanced Class, and Raphael's in it and others as well. And I do that with Mike, Graham, who you're going to be hearing from. Uh, but then also Raphael was really the one that really came up with the idea of having this documentary. So I'm just going to briefly turn it over to Raphael. Why, what inspired you to come up with this idea? Well, having been in the class for a number of years now, and seeing the what goes on and, and, and realizing that this has been going on for 57 years. I was just a kid then, maybe about 25. <laughs> and uh, I realized that nowhere was this documented. I mean, we had maybe a write-up once in a newspaper, yeah. but there was nothing really that said what it is, what is it that we do and, and how terrific it actually is. The amount of people that I have met that I've developed good friendships with, uh, the knowledge that I've, I, I own a, a watch and clock shop in the village of Fishkill called a watch biddle. I work on clocks all day, but there's never a day that I don't go to this class and learn something from somebody or even teach something to somebody. If they need a hand, can you hold this for me? Can you give me a hand over here? And it just, I just said, this has to be documented. So I contacted Maris College. They uh, turned me on to Jeff here, and here we are. Okay, well, thank you. And it is indeed very unique. Uh, you don't hear there are places, few places in the United States where they do this, but this has been going on for 57 years. We have students that have come from all over the Mid-Hudson Valley from New Jersey, Connecticut, New York City that have taken the classes over the years. So it is really quite a unique uh, offering. Now, one thing before we get into the specific classes I'd like to cover a little bit is like, why antique clocks? What's this interest in old clocks and watches for that matter? Well, it's kind of four different elements to it that I see. First of all, art. These old clocks and watches are really works of art. And this one here, this is an Atmos clock. It's only 40 years old. They still make them. Uh, but it's run on atmospheric uh, pressure and temperature changes. So it, it runs on its own as a so its own source of energy. It's beautiful to look at uh, and, you know, if you have it on your mantle. But it's also, it's not just art, but it's functional art, I like to say. Uh, if you look at pictures of John Kennedy when he was in office as president, right behind him on his shelf was an Atmos clock. Now, that would, of course, impress people coming in and looking at it. I'm sure he liked looking at it. But also, he was able to swing around and look at it and say, oh, it's quarter to one you know, we're able to tell the time off of that. So, and probably more important, I think, on these, you know, working on clocks, getting into them, is the idea of history. This is a tie to history, often a family history. Uh, someone called them conduits to the past. And when I would, when I was first getting into clocks about 50 years ago, People would go, oh, geez, I have this family heirloom clock at home. It's sitting on the mantle. I'd love to get it running. 90% of the time you'd hear about this. And uh, so, and the way I got into clocks 
was I inherited the family grand, uh, grandfather clock from my mother. This is back here. Uh, and it's 300 years old, keeps perfect time, came over from England in the early 1900s, and I just keep it maintained and it keeps running. Uh, and then on my other grandmother's side, there's this small woman's watch that my sister has. And so it's been in her, her chest of drawers for many years. And uh, she said, oh, could you get this going or have someone do it? Well, the idea is she got that from our grandmother. She's going to, and it's running perfectly now, she's going to pass it on to her, one of her daughters, and her daughters will pass it on to their daughters because it's a woman's watch. So it's, these are two important family items that you really want to have um, uh, you know, uh, passed on and working, by the way. And the other thing on clocks is there's a certain type of person that likes to work on them, basically tinkerers, people that like to tinker on things. <laughs> and uh, in our clock classes, we have men and women uh, who enjoy working on mechanical things. And um, I might and add, some going. of the people in the class are there 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, myself included, you know, okay. before we took it over running it. So that gives you a little bit of perspective on, you know, the clock world, as I like to call it. Uh, so at this point, we're going to hand things over to Bill Clark, who's going to talk about the history of the clock class and um, uh, talking about the basic clock repair class that he runs. How you doing? My name's Bill Clark. I'm the instructor in the ba basic clock repair class. And our goal in the basic clock repair class is to have a student take a movement, uh, sim similar to this one, a Connecticut movement, and develop the skills and the courage to be able to disassemble the clock and then to um, clean it, reassemble it, and put it, put it into working order. Most of the repairs that we see on your clocks are very basic kinds of repairs. Putting it in beat, oiling it, cleaning it. And, and so having that basic understanding is, is very helpful. But there's not a lot of clock classes around where, where you can have that entry level class. And so we're real grateful that the Wappinger Central School District is hosting this, this class. It seems a little intimidating when you first look at a clock like this. But if we cut it in half, this side tells the time. This side over here rings the bell. There's only five wheels over there. And yeah, that's, that's a manageable number. And we call them wheels, not, not gears. Because in the 13th century, when clocks were invented, they didn't have a lot of gears around. And wheels is what the blacksmiths were familiar with. On this side of the clock, we have six wheels. There's one extra one here for, for counting off the strike on, on, on the clock. And so that's five, six, and then there's three more in the middle here to, to move the hands. That's 14. I can count to 14. And so once you've spent a little bit of time working with the clock and we discuss it in class, you'll, you'll come to understand and become familiar with them. And 14 is not such an intimidating number as it may have first seemed when, when you looked at this clock. In one of the classes, uh, we'll, we'll discuss the escapement and the pendulum and how to work that. That would be the third class. In the sixth class, we'll, we'll discuss the uh, strike side here and how the clock is able to ring the bell, know when to ring the bell, and how to make the adjustments to, to fix that if, if it's um, gone, gone astray. Uh, many of my students um, have a collection of clocks at home and you know, they've inherited or they've acquired over the years and they just would like to know a little bit so they can do the care, of, care and feeding. Other students I've had took the class because they liked clocks and they wanted to have the community of, of clocks and the fellowship and get to meet other people. 
And that works exceptionally well because we have the beginner's class where you learn the, the basics of the class and then you move on to Jim and Mike's class where it's more of a, a fellowship and, and you can work on clocks with the other, other people. The entire clock community here in the Hudson Valley was founded by John Arches. Um, and this, John Arches was a machinist coming out of the Great Depression. He worked his way up through the machine shops. And then he was drafted into the Navy. And in the Navy, one of his crewmates was a jeweler. Well, in that era, the World War II era, you used organic oils on your clocks, which means you would have to um, oil, clean an oil clock almost every year, every other year. So you, every jeweler had to have a clock repair person associated with them. And so the crewmate and John Arches joined forces. And when they, when they got out of the Navy in 1947, they opened up a jewelry shop. And uh, John did all the jewelry repair, watch repair, and, and clock repair. It's a little unusual. You don't often see people doing cl both clocks and watches. The theories are the same, but the, uh, the tools that you use are, are going to be different. The clocks have a much larger set of tools than the watches. So our class is only focused on the clock repair, and what watches is not, not something we try to tackle. So John, John Arches is a jeweler in 1947. And then in 1966, he joined the National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors, which is still a going concern down in um, Columbia, PA. And that's the, the national org organization. They have a library and, and a museum da down there. The following year in 1967, he, he decided to to start teaching the clock class. He'd, he'd been a, a, a repairman now for 20 years, and so he started the class, and he's had six, eight students a semester on, on average for his entire tenure, and that pretty much continues to today, a little off in the COVID, but I typically have about that number of students, and we have had that continuously since 1967. In 1968, you know, students had graduated from the class, but they still wanted to be involved in the clock classes, so John started the advanced class. And then in 1974, he started the local chapter of the NAWCC, that's the National Watch and Clock Collectors, the Mid-Hudson Valley chapter, and we still run that. It meets at the Freedom Plains Presbyterian Church that's right across the street from the Arlington High School every other month, and where people can get come together. When I was taking the clock class, my instructor, Ward Miller, took us to one of those cla classes. And, and in that class, I uh, saw a nice tambour clock that I liked, and it was John Doyle who was selling it, and I it showed an interest. So John sat down with me, and then on his business card, he explained all the little defects in the clock and how to fix them and what parts I might need to do it. And he spent a good 15 minutes on me, so I bought a clock. But I didn't just have a clock, I also had a lesson in repair. And that really describes the clock community here in the Hudson Valley. They're very generous with their time and their expertise. And they'll take you through something like that. It's not just sell you a clock, it's a friendship as you go. So John Arches continued with the clock class until I think it was 1984. And then one of his students, John Gruman, took over for a couple of years. John then turned the class over to Ward Miller. And Ward Miller was my instructor. In 19, let me say, I'll take a step back there. In 1993, at the Dutchess County Fair, we, we, run a, we man a booth there. And I, I was uh, talking to John Storrow in the booth about the clocks and, and the interest in the vow. And he goes, you know, there's a clock class you should take. And I, I didn't think anything of it. A couple of years later in 1996, I got the hard copy flower, flyer. We did that back then, hard copy. And it says clock class. And I go, I remember that. The guy was talking about it. I took that class. And so Ward Miller, with, the, with a clock like this one, demonstrated how to take it apart how to make it chime like it just tried, and how to clean it, oil it, 
And I did that with a, one, one, of the, one of the clocks I, I had. I, I have 47 clocks running in the house, so I had something to choose from. And then um, I moved on to the advanced class. I stayed in the advanced class until 2002. And Ward Miller was ready to step down, and he turned the class over to me. And I've been running the clock class ever since. And uh, we, we'd love to have you join us. And the Wappinger Central School District is, is the, who hosts it. It's on their adult ed web, website. You, you can look it up there or contact any of us. Thank you. Hello, I'm, I'm Mike Graham. And as Jim Holmgren said earlier, he and I actually co-manage a class in, his, in horological restoration. This is the next phase after Bill Clark's class. He teaches theory and the rudiments of clock repair. In our class, however, by the time you get to us, you know enough to take a clock apart, oil it, clean it, re repair it, whatever, and put it back together. And that's where we have a pretty good time. There are probably 12 or 14 in our class each year. Twice a year we meet in the fall and in the spring for 10, 10 meetings a, a session. And the typical person finds a clock like this at a yard sale or a flea market and brings it in and says, I want to turn this into a showpiece. Well, this particular clock that you're looking at is an old Seth Thomas, goes back to about 1913. Uh, it's been in, an, in a very damp environment. It's got a little bit of spotted moss or algae or whatever on the case. The internal mechanism, similar to the one that Bill had on a stand, is a very good brass mechanism, but it's going to need a new mainspring because it's broken. It's going to need a few uh, bushings around the pivots, things like that. But that's what a student is going to do in our class. They're going to take this thing completely apart. They're going to clean the case, sometimes at home, and then hopefully bring back a, 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 some, a, a, a work in progress and then try to finish it in our class. This is a very common Hermley movement. Uh, they are, I guess, ubiquitous is the term. You'll find them in wall clocks, you'll find them in grandfather clocks, you'll find them in shelf clocks. Uh, there are th hundreds of thousands of them around, and probably at every one of our classes, somebody comes in with at least one or two of these. And this is a complicated movement, this one, because it's actually a triple chiming movement. It chimes three different ways, Westminster, St. Withingtons, and something else, I can't remember which. But it also has a correction feature that if it things, things get out of synchronization, it will self-correct. It's a very complicated movement. There are about three people in our class that can take one of these apart and put it back together, basically in their sleep. But once you get done with us, you'll be able to do the same thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We have a good time. I kind of like to call our class sort of a group uh, horological session and a group support session. We have a lot of fun with it. We had an interesting situation a few weeks ago where a, a person was repairing a, an anniversary clock and lost a tiny nut that belonged to part of the mounting system in the clock. We went, searched the floor. There were probably five of us crawling around the floor with flashlights and magnets trying to find this nut. And we finally gave up. And then one of us looked at the movement itself and saw that little nut jammed inside the movement. Well. It was a lot of relief at the time, a sigh of relief, and we all learned a little lesson. You just never know with clocks. As I say, we have a really good time. We appreciate that the uh, Wappinger Central School District has kept our classes going for so long. Uh, they're a big help to us. They arrange the rooms. They arrange the, re the registration system. Um, it's, been, it's a big help. So we, as I say, we have a really good time. Uh, all of the people that you've, you've heard from today are all a part of this organization that tries to further the cause of horological interest. Okay. Uh, one nice thing about working with clocks is you can branch out into doing a lot of things with them. For example, over the years, uh, we've taken in and sold, resold over $10,000 worth of clocks for Habitat for Humanity uh, at the ReStore out on Route 9. So um, we recently got a collection of clocks donated to Habitat. Uh, many of them were in very rough shape, and we sold them off for what we could get for them. 
Raphael was interested in this clock, but it was he offered me a certain amount of money for it, but I was way too embarrassed to take that much for Habitat. Even it was it was truly a basket case, so um, I made him reduce the amount that he was going to pay for it, which he did. And um, and several weeks later, he came in with this, and I literally almost fell over. Raphael, I'll let you take over. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I looked at the clock and I, I, I said, oh, that's so nice. But it really basically looked like a ball of rust. And even the movement inside was a ball of rust. And, and I went home with it and, you know, insomnia. Uh, uh, clock guys have insomnia, I think. <laughs> so I, so I, I was up all night working on this thing and scratching it and sanding it. This was all rusted. Um, like I said, I, I do have a place that I work. Uh, uh, my, my, the name of my store is The Watchpiddle in the village of Fishkill. And we do a lot of restoration on clocks and watches, uh, but never anything like this. Uh, first I had to spray it all gold, and then I had to sit there and put black on it and scratch it all off. And then I had to take the, uh, the movement and clean it out. And all of this was completely rusted, so I had to take it all apart and sand it all down and respray it. And when I showed it to uh, Bill, he insisted that I take it to the uh, to the mart, which is the uh, the, sh the, 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 the what do you call the uh, the, cl the clock oh club. clock meeting the just club the meeting. Uh, so he had me chapter. take it to the club meeting. Yeah. Uh, Mike took a, a photograph of it, and the next thing I know is there I am in a magazine, in a national <laughs> clock and watchmakers magazine, with my clock and my son, who helps me uh, at the shop. And uh, I just got to say I'm very proud of it, and I'm, I've lugged it around a few places now. I, yeah, I got to take it back sell. to the parking lot now. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it was a nice adventure, and uh, you know I'm glad I, I helped out Habitat, and, and I helped myself out. So anyways, thank you for that uh, view of the work that you did on this clock. Just a very good example of the things you can do in what I call the clock world. Uh, but just to wrap up, uh, again, I want to thank Jeff for having us come in, Jason for doing the work you're doing on it. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to have this documented. It is a very unique uh, class that we offer, and, um, and uh, you know, thanks again. <laughs>